Welcome back everyone, in today's episode I'll be showing you how you can query a database in Wix. I'll also be showing you how you can actually append or change some elements inside of your current item from that database inside of Wix. Now this is actually a tutorial that a few people in the comment section asked me about, some people actually messaged me and emailed me about, so I think it will be very important to actually go over it. So without further ado, let's actually get started. Now just letting you know here, this is a website that I'm working on for a customer and I've already created a database. It's a very simple database that basically shows bookings, whether a specific position or a spot in a parking lot is booked or not. So it's very simple. You can see that we've got like position 59, 57, from one all the way to 60, I think. And the whole idea here is to basically show um, available, whether it's yes or it's a no. And also if it's a no, to show the customer ID. So this is just a very basic and a simple database and I'll be using it to actually demonstrate to you how we can perform things on databases using Velo. So this will include querying this database, we'll, we'll do things like actually putting some uh, parameters like I want to query if it's a no and I want to append to it and so on. So let's just get started. Now the first thing I'll do on Wix just to start getting working with databases is that I'll actually go to this plus icon, I'll go to my content manager, data set, and you can see that now I've got a data set in my website. Obviously, this is all going to work only if you're in dev mode. So go ahead, hover over dev mode and click on turn on dev mode. For me, it's off because it's already on. So I'm just going to click over here. I'll click on settings. I'll click on choose a collection. And I'll select bookings. So that's the name of my data set, my database. If you've got another name, make sure you select the name. Uh, for mode, I'll select write uh, read and write so that I can append to it as well for this you can just leave it as it is for now and I'm not gonna have any filters added uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this and what I'll do is I'll actually add a button uh, just to have some interactions you don't need this actually but I'll just add a button over here that starts querying the database once we um, start it in fact what I'll do is I just I'm just thinking about this on the spot. I'll also add an input that allows us to enter a specific value like yes or no. And if you say yes, and I click on this button, then it will send us all the information um, or all the lists, all the uh, content basically from that have yes in it inside of our database. So let's get started by first adding uh, coming over here, and I'll click on on click to add a function that runs when this button is pressed and I'll say query data set beautiful so now whenever this button is pressed the code inside of here will run I'll also change the text to say something like oh let's just keep it as search and we're just going to be printing the, res printing the result back so now what I'll do is I'll reference back to that database so what I'll do is straight away I will say something like dollar sign and actually we'll say something like Wix data and I forgot to say this you also need to say something like import Wix data from Wix data now I can come over here and type in Wix data or data dot query and inside of here, you're going to be putting the name of the database that you're actually querying. In my scenario, it is bookings. Yours will be different, unless you're also doing a bookings one. Inside of here, we are going to say something like dot find, Oops, sorry, dot find. And then we will say dot then, open and close a bracket. Open and close another bracket. And now I will type in results. Um, equal to and then this symbol and inside of here we can choose to do whatever we want with the results for example let's just get started by saying console.log and I'll say results.totalCount so basically what I'm doing now is I'm just querying all the elements inside of my bookings and you can see that I typed it wrong it's not booklings it is simply bookings 
and now if I run this and click on search we get 59 and that's because our database has 59 items so it's showing us the number the total number and I did this by simply saying console.results.totalCount what happens if I remove this well let's see if I click now on preview and click on search we're gonna get this array back and then we're gonna get all this information that we can get such as total count uh, if we had any parameters whatever if I just click on items he will get we're printing the entire list of uh, positions and I can click on each single one for example zero and we'll get the ID the owner created date car updated date availability yes and title no we're basically just getting those elements back that's all we're doing so now let's actually filter this a little bit so that we do get some differences for example now it's saying find and that means we're finding all of it but if, if we want to add some queries like if we actually want to do some filtering we need to add some things before the dot find in order to query this so what i can do is i can do something like this we've got the find before i can say something dot equal and inside of here we're going to say the net, the title of the column that we're saying what's equal to so in my case let's just quickly have a quick look i want to filter this based on the available available so let's just uh, or actually you know what we can just for now just to make things more clear we can use title title so i will say i want to only query the, the row that has the following title where title is equal to and let's just for now let's just put three all right that's how simple it is now let's say i click on preview and I click on search now we're getting something back you can see that now we're getting a total count of one so we went through the entire list we found the not the place that has title is equal to three and we got that back and if I click on it we'll see here that title is equal to three and yes it is available that's how simple it is to make queries okay so just for the sake of it now let's um, connect some UI elements to this. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that whatever number the user enters in this input field will be the one that gets passed here. And it's actually very easy to do that. So <laughs> the first thing I'll do is first I'll say something like let um, user number equal to dollar sign w open a bracket put, um, quotation marks hashtag and then input one so i'll say type in input one here we will say dot text sorry dot value and see yep the value inside of user number and now all i need to do is just come over here and uh, right now user number is actually in the form of a number or a string now it will be in string so i can just say user number and now I can preview this and I can put something like to search and now I will be getting back the item with title 2 and you can imagine now that you can use this on any column and let's say I put something like 7 search it will print another one for me and it will also be correct it will always return the correct thing so this is very simple querying that you can do um, you can also do like two things for example let's say you want um, you want it to end your turn if it is available so in that case we can say something like dot equal and then I'll put something like this something like that and inside of here let's just get the name of 
our position if it's available or not so it's ju just to confirm it is available yep and I'm gonna pass that over here so you can just as many you can add as many conditions as you want and he will just make sure that it's always um, actually available yes and now if I click on PV and if I click on one and search it's gonna return it and you can see that it is actually available now what happens if I select something that is not actually available so let's go quickly go over here and click on manage content and change any of them to show no so remember number 55 we'll just change it to no now if I go over here and I preview this and uh, I just put 55 search it returns something but you can see that it actually did not return anything so we didn't get any items the total count is zero and if I open this we've got nothing that's because we put two conditions a that we want the element that has 55 but also we want it to actually be um, available so this is it for querying you can find out about more about querying from this URL over here I'll try to put it in the description otherwise now we're going to continue into actually making changes to the uh, to our um, data set from the actual platform so it will be very simple what we want to do is we want to search up for an element here and whichever one we search up for so let's say we search up for seven in the in the item that has title seven we want to change the owner to say David Bullis so what I want to do is wh whatever number I put in I basically want to update my database to have customer ID as David Bullis my name and let's go ahead and do that so to do this again it's also very simple but first of all I want to make sure that I'm actually collecting the ID for this so how do we do this so we want the item ID that's how you can add things so to do this what you can do is you can go to console.results and for now let's just print it one more time sorry so I'll put something like five search I basically want this because using this you can actually make any changes you want so we'll click back to editor and let's see if we can actually extract the ID by simply doing this which seems like we can't <laughs> so items and then the ID this usually works much quicker than this well let's go ahead and do that so I'm just trying to find out how we can actually get this so we want the specific ID so what I can do now is there we go that should work so now if I click on preview and I click on file full it's going to return the document ID so now what I can do is very easily I can assign this instead of just printing it what I'll do is I'll say something like here let's just actually create a value we'll say let doc ID equal to nothing and then over here I'll say doc id is equal to results dot id and now what we can do is that after we actually get the document that we want what we want to do is we want to say wix data dot get and inside of here i'll say booking and then I'll pass that document ID that we spoke about earlier and that way I'm first of all I'm getting the information and then I'm gonna update it and pass it on again 
So I'll say dot then inside of here I'll say to update to update like this and then inside of here I'll say to update dot and we want to refer back to the name of the owner so something like this customer ID sorry and I'll just copy and paste in here it's equal to and we'll put David Willis or to keep things even more interesting I'll put another field over here and I'll say equals to input input it's really late I can tell that I'm <laughs> not focused input dot value there we go so now that we've got that done let's actually push this back so what we are going to do is we'll say wix data dot update again we'll be passing the name of our database you can see that that's a trend here that we're going to always be doing and then I'll say to update so we're passing the object and let's just add another then statement so that we can track down whether we actually did this correctly or not results console.log correct Okay, so let's see if this crazy attempt works or not. I'll click on preview. And I'll put here a number of an item that I want to update. And sort of here, I'll put any name on one and that's what will be added. So I'll put something like David Bullis. And just so you can see that it's live, I'll just put 1 12 a.m. Click on search and we got it wrong. So ID value is invalid because of ID must not be empty. So let's have a look at what's going on. I think we should probably put this inside of this. Because I think what's happening is that it was happening too quick for it to actually get the ID of the element that we're returning. So now if I put something like um I'll put something like eight. Here, let's put David Bullis one for one thirteen now. Search, nice. <laughs> okay, so we got this actually pretty correct. Um, and let's just put another one just to be safe. And I'll put something like random search again. It is correct. So we know it's being updated. How do we check? Well, we can easily go back to the database over here. Manage content. And as you can see, element 12 does have the information that we added. Great, I'll remove it. And item 8 also have the new information. There we go. So in this tutorial, I did teach you how to query a data set. I did teach you how to update a data set as well. Now, I'm getting all this information from the Wix API reference key. And especially this page, it has all the queries and all the things that you can add as well. Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure you do leave a like and leave a subscribe. It helps me a lot. See you in the next episode.